Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. In May 2020, there was a paper published on BioArchive about the rejuvenation of rats by over 50%. We did a review of the paper, which you can find linked to above. In this interview series, we will talk with Dr. Harold Katcher, one of the main authors of the paper, about the experiment, the steps to get validation, commercialization, and how the results fit into his theories of aging. But first, let me introduce Dr. Katcher. Dr. Harold Katcher is a professor of biology at the University of Maryland. He has been a pioneer in the field of cancer research in the development of modern aspects of gene hunting and sequencing. He carries expertise in bioinformatics, chronobiology, and biotechnology. Dr. Katcher is currently working in the capacity of Chief Technology Officer at Eugenics Research, exploring rejuvenation treatments in mammals. And with that, let me start the interview. I read the paper. So you produced a paper. You wrote, co-wrote a paper in 2020, right? Um, with, with Steve Horvath. With, with Steve Horvath, yeah. yeah. So the, the reversing age dual species measurement of epigenetic age with a single clock, which had some fairly amazing results, right? I mean, the, the age was almost half for these rats. Um, more than half. More than half. More than half. More than 50, yes, 54%. But almost so, half. So could you, could you explain you know, what that, experiment was what you did and and uh you know yeah. how yeah please. very very simple yeah so the, the let me just give you one very brief basic right people always imagine that that you age because your cells age mm -hmm. your your cells age therefore your tissues weaken your organs weaken your organ systems etc um, what that paper told me is that it wasn't true, that cells don't age, that the body causes them to adopt a particular aging phenotype at a particular life stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that, that's basically it. And if you know how and and... And most importantly, that's communicated via the bloodstream. Right. The age of the cell is communicated via the bloodstream. Now, we didn't know quite how, how it was communicated, but by the end of our uh, experiments, we realized that we had actually changed the um, epigenetic age mm. of the cells to young cells. Yeah. And we had young cells who fooled them into thinking they were young cells in any case. They had changed their innermost uh, conformation, their, their, their epigenetic uh, markers so that they apparently were young cells. Mm. And then we saw from the cellular level, we saw for instance, inflammation stopped the chronic inflammation due to aging. That went down to youthful levels. I know, oh, pardon me, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, okay, so knowing that, I figured there's gotta be, uh, I developed a procedure that I call HPE, heterochronic plasma exchange. Mm. And the idea is very simple. You would just exchange. It's a, it's a uh, plasma exchange is a, is a medically approved uh, procedure, and it's used all over the world. Mm -hmm. You would just exchange a, a young person's plasma. Well, you, not for an old person's because that would make the young person old, but for some you know some neutral solution that that's commonly done. You know, yeah. Say this albumin. Uh, but try as we might, we, we try to get this German firm that said they had done it with rats. They had mm -hmm. done plasma exchange with rats. Try as we might, we couldn't get their equipment. We couldn't get the machinery. And we even tried manually trying to draw out blood, centrifuge it, uh, put in new plasma, re-inject the blood, 
but the rat's veins wouldn't wouldn't stand for that kind of treatment. We mm. just we just couldn't do it. Basically, the only vein you can reach, unless you want to cut them open, is is their tail vein, and that's uh, fairly fragile. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Oh. So. So I'd gone all the way to India, by the way. At this point, you know, I'm 73 years old in, in the middle of Mumbai. Uh, that was about three years ago. Um, oh, and he actually yeah. worked together with me. And uh, together with the NMIMS University in Mumbai. Right. The pharmacology department where we worked with uh, Dr. Kavita Singh and uh, Shraddha Khaner and uh, I think that's about it. And uh, pretty small group and modest equipment, but uh, we seem to have succeeded where nobody else has. And what the heck is going to happen? So I figured, I figured a, a few things. I can't really talk about them. But basically, I figured out that that there must be youth-promoting factors in young blood. Mm -hmm. and I figured out what they were, and that allowed me to purify them. Interesting. Okay. And I was very surprised to find that the uh, Pharmaceutical company has been trying this for, for, for a decade without success, investing tens of millions. And I got it, I think we had 100000 or $50,000 at the time. Um, luck, as you might say, or, or, uh, or a gift to me, to mankind. <laughs> right. So that was, yeah. So you've, so that was kind of one of the questions that I had. So, so you identified what, what the feature is within the blood that actually makes the change. That, so is it, is it just telling the rest of it? So it, it's a signal. It's just telling the rest of the body, go and be younger, or is it physically doing some change? Or is that actually important? It's, it's probably a combination of both. Right. Signaling and you know, I, I don't want to say too much. Okay. Um, so one question that I, I had related to the paper. So you looked at the epigenetic age of a number of the, um, of the organs, uh, the liver, the kidney, and, and they were like 54% younger. But Correct. The hypothalamus, so the brain was only eleven percent younger. Only, yeah, but it was eleven. But also, you did cognitive tests on the rats, so you ran them around the maze, right? And, yes, and they correct. Got, and they got better. Were, were they oh, improved? No question. no question. What? And they improved in the yes. way that they their cognitive. So the question, so the question I have is, so so what is the mechanism of that? If if the brain is not younger, then how come? No, no, no. The brain, the brain was younger, not the hypothalamus. The cerebrum was younger, the cere yeah, oh, okay. cerebrum was younger but not the hypothalamus. Okay. The cerebrum, oh. and, and even the cerebrum, I can't say because we don't have Horvath data. The only data we have is that its level of glutathione, which always decreases, uh, reduced glutathione, it's one of hmm. the principal protective agents inside your cell. It yeah. always decreases with age, but in our case, it went way back up to youthful levels in the brain with uh, by the time our second treatment, uh, by the time the animals were sacrificed. Right. Interesting. Um, so, by the way, your video was better positioned before because now I'm. Oh, that's OK. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's good. Um, Oh, no, no problem. Um, okay, interesting. So you've identified. So one question: the the component that you've identified 
is this something that can be manufactured or does it have to be harvested? Or is that something you can say? I cannot say. That's part of the um, number of little innovations that, that led to uh, the final elixir. Right. At some point, it'll all be published, some point fairly soon, because we plan to, to, to put our, our patent this month. So... Uh, ah, okay. That is... Everything will make sense, I promise you. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do watch out for the interview videos with Dr. Katcher, where, among other things, we will talk about having the results repeated by independent parties and what the next steps are. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.